Good morning, Bear Nation. It is I, the Oso Independiente, Bear of BearIndependent.com. We are in the truck yet again, and uh, there's a phrase that I read in a book recently that kind of just stuck with me, and that phrase was, a heavy purse makes a light heart. Now, the context here is was discussing a time with which men would carry a coin purse. I don't mean the coin purse dangling in between your legs. Get your head out of the gutter. I mean a purse, a small sack. Think of like a crown royal bag filled with little bits of copper and gold and, and uh, silver. Maybe gold and silver, you know, depending on who you were and what you were doing. But you'd have this purse tied to your belt. And the heavier your purse was, the lighter your heart was. That phrase stuck with me because there's, you know, there's that phrase, money is the root of all evil. The love of money is the root of all evil. The love of money is the problem. Blind pursuit of wealth is the problem. You know, we can read elsewhere in the word that a workman is worth his hire, right? And 1 Timothy 5, 8, uh, he who does not work has denied the faith and is worse than an infidel, worse than an unbeliever. He who does not work has denied the faith. Well, that's a workspace theology. He who does not work has denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. Hot damn, y'all. Okay. And so there's obviously, there's a sweet spot in there, right? And I was thinking about this in the context of a podcast I did recently with uh, Brother Matthew from Truth Not Fiction Matters. Very good alternate news source site on YouTube. Also, truthnotfictionmatters.com. Uh, Truth Not Fiction Matters is the name of his channel. And um, let's see, we had Rich from EMP Shield was on, and Andrew from SHTF and Go. No, I'm sorry, I got that backwards. Andrew from EMP Shield and Rich from SHTF and Go. I'm sorry, it's still early for me. And at several points, the conversation came back around in this podcast to different products that everybody at the table had developed. You know, Andrew, EMP Shield. Frankly, I'm looking forward to getting my hands on one and playing with it, and I'd like to go to their manufacturing facility and look at it, um, because I'm highly skeptical, and I want nothing more than to be proved wrong. I think that would be awesome he and I have similar backgrounds. You know, he's worked at DOD and he has worked with the Department of Energy and so forth and so on. And I know grid electricity and so forth and so on. And so Andrew developed this EMP shield, which is awesome. And Rich developed these rocket stoves and these water purification um, contraptions that he has and desal contraptions and and they sell them, which is good. And, you know, we've developed the bear facts and we sell them, which is good. There are people still walking around today that I know of because somebody bought a bear fact or a bare minimum kit from us, had a tourniquet on them and used it. Tourniquets save lives. I mean, that's like the coolest. Look. I got a SWAT T in this pocket, and I've got a, you guys know what it is. You guys have been here a long time. Ta-da, cat tourniquet in this pocket. And, you know, and I'm wearing a pair of khaki shorts. I'm not wearing, you know, my cami pants or anything, or my line gear, you know. I'm wearing a pair of khaki shorts. And it, as a brief aside, I started carrying the SWAT T uh, I've mentioned this before, but I'll mention it again. I realized as I was putting together the active shooter kits for you know, schools and churches where you have children 
I prefer a SWAT T because it's highly effective on children and unlike the rats, it, come, it does not come loose when you move a patient. Uh, but the cat tourniquet is not near as effective on small limbs as it is on large limbs. So it doesn't work great on kids. And I realized I go a lot of places with my kids. So I started carrying a SWAT T as well. And they're like $11 on Amazon. They're not terribly expensive. And so anyway, you know, it, it just got me thinking, man. We've got all these awesome people on this podcast who have all developed these different products that in one way or another are touching people's lives and improving them if not saving them and that's awesome and on the other hand you have a lot of preparedness channels prepper channels that exist solely in my mind as part of a marketing funnel to get people to a website to buy things and that's it let me let me fear porn uh, you know, do monger you into uh, getting all emotional and hysterical and buy a bunch of crap that you don't necessarily need so that you can check the box and feel better about your chances of surviving the zombie apocalypse. I think that's, you know, one extreme limit. And the other extreme limit is, you know, being completely altruistic, no profit, nothing whatsoever. And again, I think there's a sweet spot somewhere in the middle there. And I think it's okay that, you know, Rich from SHTF and Go earns a buck or two, you know, I mean, probably more than that, on each sale. Andrew from EMP Shield, the same. I make a $20 bill on each bear fact. I'm not ashamed of that. And I'm thinking about this because I'm on the way to the post office to ship bear facts right now. And except I'm not because there's a heavy hauler with a house in the middle of the road up here. So I'll just sit here a minute and talk with y'all. Literally in the... (laughs) Oh, stand by, stand by, hold on. Y'all see that? Yeah, there's a house in the middle of the road. They've been working on a lot over there and I've been wondering, hey, I wonder what they're gonna do with that. They're going to put that house on it, apparently. Okay, now we know. Evasive maneuvers! Um, Anyway, somewhere in there, there's a sweet spot, right? You You don't ever want, I don't ever want my platform to become a, uh, you know, QVC, um, you know, constant pitches from bear about why you should buy my crap. I think I've been pretty transparent. You should have a blowout kit. If you carry a gun, if you carry a way to make holes, you should have a way to plug holes. I don't care whose you buy. Ours are made in America with top notch components and they're the cheapest kits for what you get. You can get on the market because I make a $20 bill, not a hundred dollar bill on each kit. But if you already have the stuff at home, good, put a kit together. If you don't have the stuff at home, but you like Skinny Medics kits more than mine, good, buy one. I don't care. I I much more so want you to have a tourniquet and a pressure dressing and a hemostatic agent and hemostatic agent because it starts with an H. Don't you know Grammar Bear, right? I would much rather you had the things from someone than you had them from me. I don't care necessarily that you buy my stuff. I just you want. I just want you to buy the stuff. Does that make sense? Like you have options here. This is the free market. If we make, if we make the best product, then ergo we would sell the most product, assuming that we had equal footing as far as marketing goes, right? But a good product speaks for itself because the market will decide which is precisely what I'm trying to do, which is awesome. But uh, if we don't, good, buy somebody else's because then that forces me to get better. Oh, well, we gotta figure out a way to make a better product for a better cost if we're gonna compete in this market. Good, yay capitalism, man. But the other thing I just wanted to touch on, and these are just kind of morning, thoughts, stream of consciousness. Um, The other thing I wanted to touch on is, 
You know, Matthew from Truth Not Fiction Matters was getting a little frustrated because he, he had, you know, three guests and himself and a live stream and a podcast going at the same time. And some of the tech, some of the technology was not cooperating. And, you know, some people in the comments were giving him a hard time. And it's like, people, you don't want to, you don't want to, nor should you trust CNN and Fox and everybody else. You want alternate media sources. You want voice, voices of truth that you can uh, tune into and latch on to. But you want those independent voices of truth to have the same technological capabilities as CNN and Fox News, but you don't want to pay for it. And it's like, it doesn't work that way. And I really think that the vast majority of people on the other side of this iPhone misunderstand the amount of time and energy and money it takes just to play, just to play in YouTube. If you begin to take YouTube kind of seriously, you're talking even more time, even more money. You know, we just got an office. The reason, the main reason we got an office is I can get internet there. And I'm getting internet there so that I can upload videos and live stream. And then I have people <laughs> telling me, well, you shouldn't get an office. That's not of Christ. What? I'm doing that so that I can produce the content that y'all get to enjoy for free. <laughs> and it's like, there's just a misconception here. There's a misunderstanding. It costs money to even play on the YouTube playground. And then there's a demonizing of people who try and at a minimum recoup their investment, cover their cost. Not make a profit, just cover their cost. Um, you know, it's like going to a, a little league game and going, well, these guys suck, they're not the Yankees, I'm out. It didn't cost you anything to get in here. Uh, they're not near as equipped as the Yankees. They don't have the experience that the Yankees have. They don't have the budget that the Yankees have. And yet, we're going to throw a fit and complain because... The game that I'm watching is not a Yankees game. It's like, come on, you know, everybody's got to start somewhere. And I think it's in our, it's in everybody's best interest to support these small independent voices um, and not get all pissy when somebody's like, hey, consider, consider supporting us for a dollar a month at Patreon, which by the way, to all my patrons that are watching this, Bless you guys and girls. Thank you. You guys are awesome. Literally, this show would not exist without you. I would not still be playing in the YouTube playground if it wasn't for Patreon because of how malicious the YouTube algorithm is. That's just a fact. It costs me right now almost $200 a month just for internet. And it's going to cost me another $200 a month to get the internet that I need to be able to ha literally have the bandwidth to produce content and live stream on YouTube with an algorithm that does not favor our content. So we recoup next to $0 from YouTube. Now people don't like it when you talk about money on YouTube, but it's a fact regardless of whether or not people on the other side of the iPhone want to think about it on this end, there's considerable cost and time invested into making this happen. And so I'm not saying you need to buy my bear facts. I'm not saying you need to come give me a dollar at Patreon. I am saying that when people like Matthew from truth, not fiction matters, who he does not monetize his channel. He has affiliate links with, um, people he's partnered with who are good people like SHTF and go like EMP shield, like others consider supporting people like that so that they're not frustrated or they're frustrated less because it takes a, a lot of time. You know, Matthew said he'd been prepping for this show, the show that we did recently for two days, two days. And it, and a lot of times it's thankless, you know, there's other people, there's other channels that we support, like some of the, um, homesteading channels 
You know, Pastor Joe Fox at Viking Preparedness. I'm a patron of his. Nothing fancy. I'm a patron of his. Well, nothing fancy's got more money than God. He's been in YouTube for 11 years, and he's still here. After dozens of al uh, uh, algorithm changes, he's still here. Right? Um, Warrior Poet Society. John Lovell. You know, there's several others. Survival Prepping for Normal People. We support them on Patreon. And they support us back. And it's cool because there's a whole community there. But it it doesn't just happen. At some level, it doesn't just happen anymore. You have to make it happen. It has to be intentional. And the more intentional you get about it, the more of your time and money it'll eat trying to do it. And I think it's just a shame to demonize people who at a minimum are just trying to recover their costs. Um, a heavy purse makes a light heart. Well, the inverse is true as well. A light purse makes a heavy heart. So think about that when you come across these content creators here on YouTube that are really trying to bring you their best. If they have affiliate links, use them. If they have a Patreon, consider supporting them. If they're producing a product, consider using them. Not because you're patronizing in the dullest sense of the word, these people, but because they're giving you a portion of their life that they will never get back to try and educate, encourage, and edify you. And I really think it's worth, not me, I'm not speaking on behalf of me, I'm speaking on behalf of everybody else that we support and that we engage with, and, and frankly, that we love here on YouTube. There's dozens of channels that we are friends with in person that every one of them could use a little bit of love. Um, and this video is not that video of me doing shout outs, but I will do a shout out video. That's a good idea. I'm just saying, if there's a channel that's near and dear to your heart, consider supporting them because, uh, it's not near as easy as it looks, especially, especially people think you get over 10 K man, you made it. No, the fun's just beginning. Yeah. You get over a hundred K. So I've heard now it's a job job. <laughs> it's work for me. 39,000 people, it's work. And a workman is worth his hire. He who does not work has denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. Shalom, y'all. Blessings.